Good morning, happy Monday, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way and for tropical lovers this thunderstorm, this weather update is going to be thunderstorm focused. First we will start things off over in Victoria and Tasmania, just talking about a little bit of winter weather over there before we touch on severe thunderstorms over New South Wales, Queensland and parts of Western Australia as well. We'll get on to pulse thunderstorms and tropical rainfall in far north Queensland and a potential rain bomb across the interior parts of Queensland and the Northern Territory, so a lot to get through today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, we're just 20 away from 18,000. Your support lately has been greatly appreciated, but without any further ado, let's get stuck straight into things. And like I said, we're going to kick things off just with a quick winter forecast down south. There is a little stream of showers and uh, miserable weather heading for Tasmania and Victoria throughout the course of today. That's powered by a low pressure system in the Tasman Sea. However, these, uh, not violent, but these unpleasant weather conditions will be easing off throughout the course of today. Showers will continue into the afternoon hours for the west coast of Tasmania, but for Victoria and New South Wales, they will be clearing out by the later morning hours and we're not expecting any significant rainfall accumulations only a couple more millimeters across Victoria and New South Wales and potentially up to 25 millimeters across Tasmania's west coast which as we all know compared to the rainfall especially over the last couple of months that is a drop in the ocean there are some strong winds however you can see winds on Hogan Island and Wilson's promontory approaching or exceeding gale force at this time uh, some strong winds and some strong wind gusts as well across Victoria outside of Colac you can see here 40 kilometer an hour winds into the Melbourne area in July Long. We're looking at around 30 to 50 km an hour winds gusting up towards that 50 mark. So it is a little bit gusty over there and that's going to keep temperatures feeling quite cool across much of uh, the plains across western Victoria and it'll also keep things quite chilly into the mountainous regions as well. Malakuta as well with winds of 48 kilometers an hour and again hopefully they do drop off throughout the course of today. Some strong winds of course down towards Matsyker Island 74 kilometers an hour gusting up to 90. That's pretty stock standard for them especially this time of the year however it is making for some rather unpleasant weather there. Now the showers and rain will continue throughout the course of this week it'll pick up again on Wednesday morning for Tasmania as a cold front brushes through this one here could actually fire up some thunderstorms late Wednesday night for Victoria so we will keep a very close eye on this cold front in our forecast updates but you can see here as this front moves across Victoria into the afternoon hours of Wednesday it's going to slam up some temperatures some warmer temperatures up into the mountainous areas it's going to jam these temperatures uh, these warm temperatures up in between the mountains and the plains and that's just prime conditions for thunderstorms to fire up here so in the wake of this cold front here uh, in the early afternoon hours of Wednesday where temperatures are around that 20 to 21 degrees Celsius especially between sort of Bendigo up towards Albury, including Shepparton and uh, some of the areas in the northern parts of Victoria, there is the chance of thunderstorms, potentially severe thunderstorms as well, with damaging winds and isolated pockets of heavy rainfall uh, across much of the northern plains of Victoria. And on that note, that does lead us very nicely into the next part of our video, which is the thunderstorm-centric uh, uh, part of the video. So we're going to be talking about thunderstorms across New South Wales and Queensland across the next 48 hours in this part of the video before we move over to Western Australia, and then we're going to make it tropical. So let's start things off over in northeastern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. You can see here on the satellite and the radar imagery, there is a band of cloud moving across central Queensland that's associated with a trough line uh, jammed between these high-pressure ridges here and a trough line extending out from the low pressure in the Tasman Sea. And this band of cloud here does have some light rain in it. There's negligible accumulations expected, but as this band of cloud moves through into the northeastern parts of New South Wales tonight, there's going to be a few isolated thunderstorms pop up outside of Lismore and Grafton. And some of these could extend into the scenic rim of southeastern Queensland. So we'll keep a very close eye on these storms here. Not expecting severe thunderstorms. The Buford Neurology has actually highlighted a likelihood for severe thunderstorms this afternoon, but I just reckon considering the setup at this time, there's not enough heat, there's not enough moisture, and it's too late in the day for potentially severe thunderstorms to fire up. That isn't saying that they're not going to happen and that there's no chance of severe thunderstorms. However, I do believe that there is a slim chance of potentially severe thunderstorms from this weather event tonight. These thunderstorms will likely continue off the coast until early Tuesday morning. They will fire up again by Tuesday afternoon along a trough line across Queensland's coastline here. You can see a little bit of a, a line of thunderstorms extending inland across the Sunshine and the Gold Coast here, uh, but it is very much Brisbane and Gold Coast based. They're not extending deep up into the Sunshine Coast, north of Maroochydore even, and these thunderstorms here do look like they could have the potential to be potentially severe. Uh, Taking a look at the temperatures as well, you can see daytime maximas into the high 20s across much of inland South southeastern Queensland. A little bit cooler along the coastline, but uh, I'm going to be kept a little bit cooler by this rainfall here, especially into the afternoon hours, but still looks definitely hot enough for some thunderstorms to fire up and definitely the chance of some potentially severe thunderstorms as well from this uh, weather event. 
And you can see it here, not expecting too much in the way of winds, but this little energy ball here, combined with the available energy in the atmosphere for thunderstorms, looks like we're going to be having some thunderstorms over that southeastern corner of Queensland by tomorrow afternoon. And I'm just going to pull the rainfall accumulation map over the next three days. You can see it here across the parts of northeastern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. There are some big rainfall accumulations, up to 30 or 40 millimetres expected. Much needed rainfall as well, might I add, around Gold Coast and the scenic rim for Queensland, especially. They are in a little bit of a dry out right now they're experiencing below average rainfall at least um, and they really did miss out on the rainfall event that happened about a month ago now so this rainfall here is going to be much appreciated around the Gold Coast however from these thunderstorms it looks to be very hit and miss there is another band of storms coming through Wednesday afternoon but they're going to be focused much more inland towards Moree and Lightning Ridge in New South Wales and St George in Queensland uh, and they don't look to be around the coastline but they could be firing up probably the best chance of some substantial rainfall from these thunderstorms throughout this entire sort of thunderstorm storm event here. But again, I'm not holding out for big rainfall accumulations from this weather event. The highest of accumulations will likely be around the Gold Coast and the scenic rim up towards Mount Tambourine. We could be seeing up towards 50 millimetres from this weather event. But the rainfall likelihood here is very low and there is a great deal of uncertainty in terms of how much rainfall is expected. And this is sort of a thing where we're going to have to take it by ear and take a look at the radar when these thunderstorms do actually occur. It's going to be a very difficult forecast to make. That's for sure. I can guarantee you that right now. And you can also see that there's some storm activity now across central Western Australia. Now this one here has actually got more rainfall on the forecast than over in Queensland. And this is being powered up by what's uh, going to form uh, throughout the course of today. It's a little bit of a trough line in the cloud extending down the west coast. And that's going to be driving some warm temperatures over the next five days, especially down towards Perth, where we are going to be seeing temperatures into the high 20s by the end of the week for the first time in quite a few months. You can already see it now. There are a few showers and thunderstorms starting to pop up between Parabadua towards Gascoyne Junction and Linden around the Mount Augustus sort of area. Uh, a beautiful scene, that's going to be for sure, especially this time of the day uh, with the sun just rising now or just risen a few hours ago across parts of northwest and western Australia. And it's going to be a beautiful scene throughout the course of today. And these thunderstorms will intensify over the coming couple of hours. You can see them here really blowing up for about 3 or 4 p.m. local time. So if you are a grey nomad or a traveller in this area, I'd advise giving the Mount Augustus area a bit of a miss. I'd get yourself further south, probably south of Gascoyne Junction, down towards maybe Wood or down towards Murchison even, uh, or get yourself up and towards Karangini or up towards Tom Price, Panawansia and Parabadu. That's just going to give you the most pleasant camping experience. You'll be able to see the thunderstorms from those areas that I've just listed. However, uh, I believe that there's a very slim chance of rainfall out there. And again, with these thunderstorms, the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss and light when it does hit. Uh, but still, camping in rainfall or rainy weather is going to be quite unpleasant. Absolutely not expecting any roads to flood from this weather event either. I need to make that apparent. Uh, there's there's going to be no flooding or major flooding from this weather event here. We're only expecting a couple of millimetres of rainfall. Uh, however, you can see over the coming couple of days as well, these storms do persist in a line across Tuesday as well into Tuesday afternoon. There they fire up again Tuesday evening into the northern parts of the goldfields. And between a line of mountain magnet up towards sort of Newman, including Megathara and Q, with the chance of thunderstorms there. In short, over the next 48 hours, I'm expecting a chance of thunderstorms follow the cursor closely in this kind of general area here. So a pretty big swathe of Western Australia expecting the chance of thunderstorms, mostly into the interior. It does miss the majority of the mining communities in the Pilbara region. It's kind of just the touristy spots in the Gascoigne and some parts of the uh, gold fields as well that are expecting the chance of thunderstorms throughout the course of today. Uh, also in towards Wednesday as well, we're going to be seeing some thunderstorms fire up. Wednesday is probably going to be the best chance to see a good lightning display on Great Northern Highway or around Great Northern Highway. The areas between sort of uh, East Lines River across to Mekathara and Newman, there's going to be the chance of some good uh, thunderstorms uh, in that sort of area. So again, if you are a bit of a storm chaser in the area, it might be an idea to get yourself out there and start chasing these storms by Wednesday afternoon because it looks like there's going to be the good chance of some widespread storms. The rainfall does clear out on Thursday. Still the chance of some storms across the interior parts into the north and the south interior around Warburton, even up towards Kiwakura and Balgo. Uh, but then by Thursday afternoon and late Friday, we're not expecting the chance of any thunderstorms into Western Australia for the time being. There's also going to be some storms firing up in the top end of Western Australia into the uh, Kimberley region as well. You can already start to see on the satellite imagery there is a bit of cloud just starting to linger offshore, and that seems to start contrast to the very clear weather that we've been seeing over the last couple of days and these cl uh, cloudy conditions are sort of between Fitzroy crossing across to Balgo and Hills Creek. This is certainly going to be something worth a watch as well. With temperatures now soaring into the mid-30s, there's certainly the chance of some storms firing up in this general area this afternoon. But again, all these storms are going to be very few and far between and we're expecting non-severe thunderstorms. I need to make that very clear. 
Now, just before we talk about a rain bomb across central Queensland and the Northern Territory, we're going to talk about a little bit of rainfall up in far north Queensland. There's not too much on the forecast here, but you can see 10-day rainfall accumulations. I've just spoiled all of interior Australia's rainfall, but you can see 10-day rainfall accumulations looking quite healthy for parts of far north Queensland. The majority of that's going to be happening uh, throughout the course of this week. You can see showers continuing throughout the course of today. Showers will pick up again on Tuesday and into Wednesday morning before easing off again Wednesday afternoon. Some showers still expected to persist throughout Thursday and into Friday as well. Showers continuing for Saturday and Sunday where they could be heavy at times with up to 50 millimetres expected on Saturday and Sunday for areas around Innisfail and Babinda. The rainfall does clear off next week in the way for this big rainfall event up here. This is certainly going to be something worth watch, but I'll get to that in just a few minutes. And like we always talk about in basically every single video, this rainfall here likely to become runoff up in far north Queensland just considering how wet the soil moisture is up here, the soil moisture values. You can see it here across the Casper Coast 100%, and this is quite concerning indeed. This is certainly numbers that are causing for some concern at this time. This kind of soil moisture values means that any rainfall that does get itself up here into far north Queensland is just going to immediately become runoff and start to add to the river levels. And when we start to see the real rainfall accumulations of late October and early November, the 120, 150, 200 millimetres in a 24 hour period start to pile on up here, uh, happening consistently a couple of times a week, that's when we're seeing soil moisture values like this causing problems much earlier on into the wet season and making it for a very long and severe flood season. And it's the same problem up in the Daintree as well, slightly less so considering it is a bit of a smaller area of far north Queensland, but into the Daintree River around Mossman and Daintree Village, the chances of flooding this year are very much above average, and this certainly is a cause for concern, that's for sure. We will keep a very close eye on things up in the far north Queensland area, and I'll keep you guys posted, that's for sure. However, again, this is certainly a bit of a concerning forecast at this time. But I mean, take a look at this. This is soil moisture values across interior Australia now, and this is going to be them in 10 days. Some very high values are expected, or relatively high values are expected to fire up across much of Queensland and the Northern Territory. And it is all powered by this rainfall event that is expected to fire up at the end of this coming weekend. So along a trough line across central Queensland, extending from a low pressure system in the Northern Territory across sort of Wave Hill and Docker River, the Eastern Rebirth model is calling for some thunderstorms to to fire up associated with this low pressure system actually throughout the course of Monday. And this is gonna promote some heavy falls, some very heavy falls in fact across parts of the Northern Territory between a line of Elliott down to Tennant Creek and Alice Springs, even into the Northern parts of South Australia and then across in towards Queensland. These areas are expecting some substantial rainfall accumulations from thunderstorms next Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Now this is still a week away and things can change on the forecast. And I'll just get to the reliability of this forecast in a few minutes, but just take a look at the raw numbers here in terms of rainfall accumulations, up to 30 millimetres every three hours, 10 millimetres an hour over parts of Queensland. Some substantial rainfall accumulations are really expected to get themselves stuck into parts of all this part of Queensland. And we're looking at accumulations up to 150 millimetres just in the later parts of next weekend and into the early parts of next week. The wettest accumulations look to be around Mount Isa and Cloncurry up towards 130, even 140 millimetres there. But some decent accumulations above 50 millimetres expected across a big area of Queensland, extending from the Queensland Northern Territory border up towards Burketown and Corumba and Georgetown, that sort of area. will inland towards Georgetown and then down towards Huendon, Matabara, Longreach, and then down towards Windera, and then across to the South Australia Queensland border. Anywhere in this sort of general area can expect up to 50 millimetres of rain and potentially even more from this forecast solution here. And even some heavy falls expected to enter the Northern Territory and parts of South Australia as well. So it is a widespread, very heavy rainfall event expected now on the forecast. However, we take things like this tropical rainfall with a very heavy pinch of salt. And I'm about to show you why. The GFS is calling for nothing in the way of rainfall across Central Australia. They do call for some thunderstorms to fire up Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday from the same low pressure event that's going to be moving through central parts of Queensland and the Northern Territory. So both forecast models do actually have the same style of weather event at the same time on the forecast, which does give me a high degree of confidence in saying that this weather event is going to pan out, at least to some degree here. But the GFS model, which is typically a very reliable model, I haven't found it as reliable this year as the Eastern Relief, but it is still a very reliable model, is calling for nothing in the way of rainfall. And the Axis G3 as well, calling for negligible amounts of rainfall accumulations as well. They're actually calling for it to be more of a West Australian focused event here and then the rainfall sliding down into southeastern Queensland and across New South Wales. So the forecast models do still have the exact same weather event as the East Left, which is calling for this dramatic amount of rainfall. However, 
they're calling for it in far different solutions. And this just gives you an idea of the uncertainty that we're facing as a forecaster here, uh, the uncertainty that I'm facing in calling for what's exactly gonna happen from this weather system. I have no earthly idea at this time. If I was to pick a solution right now, I would say expect the Eastern Perfect solution to happen. They've been a very reliable forecast model this year, but considering this is a brand new addition on the forecast, and it is very early in the season right now, I mean, this is only mid-September that this event's gonna be happening for weather events to this to actually occur. Occur, I would take this with a very, very heavy pinch of salt indeed. I don't think it's going to pan out exactly like the forecast is saying. I think there'll be a dramatic change tomorrow, but I can guarantee you by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'll have a precise answer on what's going to be happening across Queensland and the Northern Territory or where this rainfall is going to slide to, because I do expect across uh, interior parts of Australia at least 100 millimetres to fall at some point in the next two weeks or so. We're definitely going to be moving into a wetter phase, that's for sure, and I have been watching the forecast models quite closely. The Beauty Meteorology has actually been calling for this weather event for about a week now, so we will keep a close eye on things. If they, if this weather event does pan out exactly how it's forecast to right now, then the Beauty Meteorology would have pulled off a forecasting miracle. So this would be a very interesting thing to actually come to uh, revelation on the forecast, that's for sure. Again, we will keep a very close eye on things here, and I will keep you posted on this weather event here. But right now, expect the Eastern Relief solution to actually pan out. Uh, I think the GFS and the Access G3 just don't really know what they're talking about at this time, but I will keep a very close eye on things that's for sure this rainfall guaranteed to cause flooding if it does pan out as well and come to fruition so again this is certainly something worth to talk about it is all that i have time for today thank you so much for watching the video to this point again we're just 20 subscribers away from 18,000. so if you haven't already please do consider subscribing your support lately has been greatly appreciated um thank you so much for all the nice comments on the videos as well and all the constructive feedback it's been much appreciated thank you to all the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now i could not run this show without them they're the reason i have access to all of this fantasy software so again the support there is much appreciated but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye